Hey, EP Chemsters, this is the last section on this Chapter 17 series here. And this is all about electrolysis. And what you need to know about electrolysis is that these are non-spontaneous cells. So energy must be added to make these reactions go. And energy is typically from your outlet or from a battery or something. So electrolysis is forcing a current through a cell to produce a change in which the cell potential is negative. And so it's very similar. Oxidation is still at the anode, and that's where uh, something's going to lose electrons. And reduction is still at the cathode, that's where something's going to gain. Now, if you look at this battery, do you notice that the battery, the electrons are flowing this way? It's opposite than how we've normally been doing it. Typically, all these pictures that we've been showing you, the electron flow is going from left to right, the anode to cathode. But actually, your source of electrons this time is right here, your battery or your plug-in power source. So here's the electrons doo -doo 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 -doo, traveling down the wire, gathering on this metal. So that's the reduction that the ions in solution will be attracted to that. And then you're going to have over here where um, you're going to lose electrons because it's electron poor electrode and it's going to be your positive end and it's going to keep flowing this way. So oxidation is still at the anode, reduction is still at the cathode. But keep in mind, if you were to do your E cell for this, you're going to end up with a negative E because it's non-spontaneous. Now this is the idea behind electroplating. Um, this is if you would like to deposit silver ions on that, that platter we showed at the very, very beginning of this uh, whole series of chapter 17, was that platter was silver plated. You don't need an entire silver platter, it's too heavy and way too costly, but it's really pretty though. So if you just want something to be plating out, in this case it's a spoon I think, um, you would have your source of current, your battery, and you have electrons going this way. So now this spoon is actually going to be negatively charged, so the positive silver ions are going to be attracted to it. And now here's your source of silver ions is your silver bar. And that's going to be putting the silver ions into the solution. And then the silver plating is going to occur over here. So the anode is the piece of the plating metal. So your spoon or your platter or whatever. And the cathode is the object to be plated. And I have a silver in here. If you also remember earlier, we talked about um, galvanizing zinc. Uh, would think it'd be something very similar. You'd, you'd take your steel pipe or whatever right here and you'd have a solid zinc uh, bar here. And it's the same idea. The way you, you turn your battery on is that you're forcing this to become your cathode of your, with iron or something and you're forcing this to be your anode for the zinc to play out. So this is your source of zinc. That's where the zinc would, would play it out. So that's how zinc plating would work. Alright, so another very common um, use of electrolysis of electrolysis of water. And I actually found a YouTube video that shows electrolysis of water. It, it's pretty short, it's just a couple minutes long. And I really like this one for a couple reasons. The main one is I really think the guy's accent is really cool. All right, so here it is, hang on. Right, what we're gonna be doing today is electrolysis of water. Now, what we've got is what we call a Hoffman voltometer. Now, we've got water in these got an electrode on each side here and this is connected up to a power pack. So if I switch this on, I start to see bubbles being produced from both these. Now the way this works is where the bubbles come up, the gas starts collecting here and pushes down, which channels the water up into this escape bit here. Now see it starting to bubble away there, it's starting to collect. Now water is made up of two parts, two part hydrogen, one part oxygen. So, as you start to see it, this one will start collecting much faster, twice the amount. That'll be the hydrogen getting collected there, and that'll be the oxygen. Now, the way we test for hydrogen is what we call the squeaky pop test. We'll be taking the lit flame and put it into the test tube at the top. Now, when the hydrogen contacts the flame, it'll explode and it'll create a little squeaky pop. When we do the test for oxygen, we put in a, wooden, a glowing wooden splint into it and it should hopefully relight it. So we'll just leave this for a few seconds to collect. You can already see it's starting to collect more here than on here. So we'll just leave it for a few minutes just to settle away. Right. And 
hopefully it should be enough hydrogen that wasn't test with. So I'm just gonna light the splint up and all do. Turn the lab pack off. Merge with hydrogen. There we go. We're going to test for oxygen now. Yep, there we go. Let's read it the split. I really liked the guy's accent, didn't you? And I also liked how he did the squeaky pop test for the hydrogen and the, the showing the glowing flints uh, test for the oxygen again. But what else I wanted to show you is how much energy did that require to make that happen? So this picture actually has the, uh, the setup opposite of what the... Uh, other guy, the, the Scottish guy had, but we can still deal with it. Um, so I would like to actually go ahead and uh, come up with these electric potentials. And will you go back to the, uh, the page with all the potentials on there? So let me pause it, go back to that page, and let's find the two key uh, half reactions for what's going on here. Okay, so we're back at this table again, and I know for a fact that water is made up of H+, and so that kind of rings a bell where we have uh, the zero, zero mark here. So here is where we have the H+, plus, uh, with two electrons making hydrogen gas. So there's my uh, one reaction, or half reaction, and I gotta find the other one. Now keep this in mind, if water is made up of H plus, well, what's the other part to this? Um, it should be your hydroxide. So if you look closely and look for the hydroxide, well, I see one right here. Is that gonna help me though? And the answer is no, because I need to make some oxygen gas. So we can't use that one. Um, look closely, maybe on the actually the um, the other side, and you might just find what I'm looking for. All right, I don't know if you saw, but it's actually at the very top of the page up here. So look at those two, and again, they're both written as reduction potentials, and keep this in mind, this is not spontaneous. So uh, keep your finger on this page, let's go back to where we were. So here is my reaction, and I know I need to have the hydrogen being produced and the oxygen being produced. So what's going on here? Well, we know we can do this. We're going to have two H plus and uh, two electrons being used to make the H2 gas. So I have that right. Now this is my uh, reduction, isn't this? Okay, and it's written just the way it was found on that, that sheet. But what about the other one? Well, oxygen needs to be produced as well. And so I need to actually flip-flop that information we had at the top of the page. So we have uh, four hydroxides making oxygen gas. Well, I already wrote that down, didn't I? Oxygen gas and uh, two waters and four electrons. And again, this is my oxidation. Look at your electrons, they're not balanced. So what do you need to do? You need to multiply this by two. And what is our entire reaction? We have uh, four H plus, plus four OH minus, that makes sense. My electrons canceled out, and now I have two H2 uh, plus two O2, and then two H2Os. But what do you notice about my waters? Well, if this is going to add up to four H2Os, and here I have two H2Os. These are going to cancel out, so I have two H2O yielding two H2 plus uh, O2 here. Actually, this should be O2, not two O2. Sorry about that. And go back, and this, my reduction, my E naught was 0, 0.00. And when this second one was written as a reduction, it was a positive 0.40, but now this 
is not reduction. This is uh, oxidation. This is my anode. And so it's negative 0 0.40 volts. I had to switch the sign. So the E of the cell is 0 0.40, but negative, negative 4.0 voltage. And again, that's showing you that this is not spontaneous. And boy, am I glad it's not spontaneous because then water would just start separating out to its, its elements. And heaven forbid we have an open flame nearby because it would all blow up. So I'm really glad that it is a non-spontaneous, that it needs an outside source to make it work. All right, electrolysis of mixtures of ions. Hopefully you see the most easily reduced metals, all uh, the highest values of the E cell will be plated out first. So if you have a mixture of stuff, the one that's easiest will plate out. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now the stoichiometry, the electrolytic process, there are these different steps but I always thought that factor labeling uh, made a lot more sense in keeping and memorizing these four steps. But basically what you need to do is convert current and time to the quantity of charge in coulombs, convert the quantity of coulombs to moles of electrons, convert moles of electrons to moles of substance, and then convert moles of substance to grams of substance. Uh, that's fairly, in my book, kind of cumbersome to keep that all memorized. Instead, I do this, let your factor labeling get you through. So let's check out the next problem. How long must a current of 5.0 amps, and again, look at your units of what an ampere is, one coulomb per second, be applied to a solution of silver ions to produce 10.5 grams of silver? So again, what are we looking for? We're looking for time, and this is in seconds. So I'm going to ask myself how many seconds will it take to produce that many grams of silver. And as you know, we can go grams, periodic table, and look up the mass of silver. And I believe it is 107.87 grams are in one mole of silver. Well, I need to get to something to do with moles of electrons, don't I? So one mole of silver ion produces one mole of electrons. And then what was a Faraday? If you remember, a Faraday was 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons. Well, let's keep going. Coulombs need to go on the bottom. And hey, look at this. If coulombs are on the bottom, I can always put seconds on top. That is my, my link to going between uh, time and, and this coulomb idea. And so it is five amperes, so I need to put the five down at the bottom and the one second on top. And check this out. I didn't memorize the steps. I did my factor labeling. Grams cancels out. Moles of silver cancels out. Moles of electrons cancel out. Coulombs cancel out. Seconds are on top. I am looking for time. Boy, life is good. So when I get done with this, um, the problem is it's 1.88 times 10 to the third seconds, or 1,880 seconds. Um, they didn't ask you, but could we find out how many minutes that is? How many minutes are in 1880 seconds? There are 60 seconds in one minute, and that ends up being roughly a half an hour. So if you want to produce that much silver um, on, on your spoon or on your platter or something, you got to let it run for 31.3 minutes. Finally, we have problem number 16. Um, an acidic solution contains those ions. Using the E values listed, give the order and oxidizing ability of these species and predict which one will reduce it to cathode at the lowest voltage. So if I had a mixture of those three ions, which one's going to play it out first is basically what they're asking you. Um, so let's look up those things and come right back. All right, so if I have those three things in solution, uh, which one will be reduced first or at the lowest voltage? Well, again, if you go back and look at your notes, you said that one of the highest potential is most easily reduced. So if you were going to ask yourself in what order, well, it's kind of in the order in which they gave you. And that's the end. So hopefully uh, this was a good chapter for you. I uh, hope spring break is going well for you. Make sure you do the assigned problems, and we'll see you when we come back. Bye.